Good morning, folks. We're hitting the accelerator as top news flies our way from across the planet and out into deep space. We are getting started with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last 24 hours on the sun in 193 angstroms. Still no sunspots, no solar flares, dark coronal holes are visible, and while eruptive behavior is muted, we do have some plasma filaments near the limb we're monitoring, especially incoming on the north above the coronal hole, slightly less dark, thin, snaking filaments seen behind sparse coronal plasma. We're going to monitor a little sun-diving comet as well today. Appears to be a Kreutz family incomer just behind the western limb. Solar wind here at Earth is undergoing the process of entering a coronal hole stream. Phi angle, density, and speed are in flux awaiting impact, and until then, geomagnetic conditions are low and quiet. Impact will be from the departing coronal hole seen turning to the right there. As you can also see with the progression, it is connected to the North Pole while the incoming opening is tied to the South as an extension. That ridge meteorologists have been discussing for a week is evidently displayed in the U-shaped cloud line last night over the U.S. There were some big storms across the line, but the worst was in the upper Midwest and to the Southeast where the lightning peaked in intensity and was gorgeous from GO-16. In the West Pacific, we're monitoring a system heading for that island chain between Taiwan and Japan. That'll be the second one in about a week. It is already looking strong from Himawari and is expected to intensify today on approach to the northwest. Top storm report today comes out of Cambodia. A rougher than usual rainy season has seen thousands of families displaced. Thousands more felt like leaving wasn't even an option. Global climate report is out for June. Nice mix of hot and cold across the world. It is being called one of the top five hottest Junes ever, but does it look that way to you? Moving outward into the solar system and starting with Mars, turns out its atmosphere is not what they've thought. There is a harmonious flow pattern from the North Pole to the south of the water sublimated during sunlight exposure at the North Pole. Almost looks like it was tracing a magnetic field the planet allegedly doesn't have. On to our star where the solar wind genesis zone has been detailed unlike ever before where they've determined that the corona's transition to solar wind outflow occurs around 20 million miles out nearly 60% of the way out to Mercury, and indicating that the periphery is a pseudo-shell out past the looping large-scale fields and located in regions where most, if not all, of the IMF are streaming outward. Heading further out into the solar system and into the past, we find an excellent paper detailing one of our favorite topics, planets and chaos. Learn more about Jupiter's encounter, is shifting inward, and add that to what you already know about the inner system pileup and Nice model flip-flopping of the outer planets. Let's head out a bit further. Scientists attempting to determine why a star appears to be blinking its brightness have figured out that two planets likely collided right in our visual plane looking at the star, making for a cluster of debris that messes with its light visibility. Last but not least, VLT showing off its best adaptive optics potential. We are zooming in on a cluster of stars in the direction of the Milky Way bulge, and we are seeing the transition from previous best image to the new one provided by VLT. They have also decided to snap a shot of Neptune while they are at it, break the record for clearest image ever taken of that planet as well. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.